Okay, this is the 25th of August of 2022. The title of this message is, There Are Consequences for Sin. Before we go further, I'm going to pray. Father, I thank you for you being with us. I ask you to put us all in a hedge of protection. Protect this device that it stands still and strong. And that nothing interferes with the message going out. I ask Holy Spirit to attach to every word so it's only your message. I ask you to put every one of us in a hedge of protection, Father, as we study your word, and I upload this video without any head cup, any cups or anything going on with it, in Jesus' name. Now, before we go further, I'm going to mention several things here to like, like clarify the points that I'm trying to make. Okay, first off, we want to remember that what I'm going to be talking about is before the crucifixion of Jesus, okay? And I also want to remember that Moses had a relationship, like a face-to-face -face relationship with God, okay? And he was also one of the most humble, or if the most humble at that time from all men that were living. That's according to scriptures, okay? And, you know, uh, I want to ask also why Moses was so special to God. And I want you to keep in mind that uh, these are examples of punishment that happened in the Old Testament. Only, and this is only a few of them. This is not all of them, obviously. I wouldn't have enough room on the, anywhere to write all this down. So we want to go back and we want to look at Numbers chapter 12, verse 5 to 9. Numbers 12, 5 to 9. And I'm also, while I'm talking to you, going to be looking them up too. So they're not pre-pasted anywhere. Um, numbers 12, 5 to 9. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Moses and Miriam. And they both came forth and said, and he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him. In, it's the envision, and I will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently not in dark speeches, and the uh, similitude of the Lord shall he behold, wherefore then were thou not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. Whew. Okay, and we got to ask once again, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you a scripture rather. Why was he so, so, so special to God? Why was he so special to God? Okay. And we know that he was humble. Let's look again at Numbers 12, verse 3. Now the man Moses was very meek above all men which were upon the face of the earth. Okay. Um, so you think you're going to get away with sinning and there's not going to be any consequences. I think you better think again. And here's proof that you're dead wrong if you think this way. Okay, first we're going to look at Moses, Moses Deuteronomy 32 to, and verses 48 to 52. So Deuteronomy 32. Okay, Deuteronomy 32. Of course my pages are going to stick. Deuteron ah, Deuteronomy 32. 48 to 52. Deuteronomy 32, 48 to 52. And the Lord spake unto Moses that self same day, saying, Get thee up unto this mountain, Abram, unto Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, that is over against Jericho. And behold, the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel for our possession, and die in the mount 
whether thou goest up and be gathered unto the people, thy people, as Aaron thy brother died in Mount Hor, and was gathered unto his people, because ye trespassed against me among the children of Israel at the waters of Meribath Kadesh, in the wilderness of Zin, because ye sanctified me not in the midst of the children of Israel. Yet thou shalt see the land before thee, but thou shalt not uh, go thither into the land which I give the children of Israel. See, even though Moses was one, one of the uh, only ones, if not the only one at that time, that was so humble where it caught God's attention and God used him in a mighty way. We see that in scripture. Um, he still had to pay for his sin because he did not do what God told him to do. He got angry, and I'm going to show you that. Numbers 28 to 13. And Numbers 20... Oh, my pages are sticking together, 20, uh, 8 to 13, Numbers 28 to 13. Take the rod and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. So thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron uh, gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, Here now ye rebels must we fetch water for you out of this rock. And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice, and the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because ye believed me not, to, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, before ye shall bring, say, you know, you be, therefore you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. This is the water of Meribah, because the children of Israel strove with the Lord, and he was sanctified in them. Now look, what Moses was supposed to do was speak to the rock, which that right there is a, another lesson that Holy Spirit impressed upon me, and I'm, I will be studying that. He was supposed to speak to the rock, and the rock would bring forth water. Now, Moses didn't do that. He, he even went as far as saying, must we fetch water for you? Wait a minute. God is the one that does these things, just like in my life and what, and what he's told me to do. It's not me doing it. I'm yielding to let him do it through me. And so that was number another, another thing that Moses had done that made God angry. Now, we're going to speak about Aaron for a second. Let's look at Numbers chapter 20, verse 24 to 29. Numbers... 20, 24 to 29. Numbers 20, 24 to 29. Aaron shall be gathered unto his people, for he shall not enter into the land which I have given, the, uh, uh, given unto the children of Israel, because ye rebelled against the word at the water of Meribah. Take Aaron and Eleazar his son, and bring them up onto Mount Horeb, and strip Aaron of his garments, and put them upon Eleazar his son. And Aaron shall be gathered unto his people, and shall die there. And Moses did as the Lord commanded, and they went up into Mount Hor in the sight of all the congregation. And Moses stripped Aaron of his garments, and put them upon Eleazar his son. And Aaron died there in a top. of the mount, and Moses and Eliezer came down from the mount. And when all the congregation saw that Aaron was dead, they mourned it for Aaron thirty days, even all the house of Israel. And we're going to look at uh, Numbers chapter 12. Numbers chapter 12.
And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman who, woman who uh, he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Had the Lord indeed spoke only by Moses, hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam, Come out ye the three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. You know, I'm stop here a second. This reminds me of back in the New Testament where it said, um, Oh, wait a minute. It said not to be, not to be many masters, something like that. Not to be many masters, because they will receive the greater damnation. And uh, if I remember, I'll look that up and put it at the end. Come ye out, ye three, and unto the tabernacle of the congregation, and they three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud, and stood in the door of the tabernacle, and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth, and he said, Hear now my words, if there be a prophet among you, I the Lord will make myself known unto him in a vision, and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all my house. Okay, with him uh, will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Therefore, then were they not afraid to speak against my servant Moses. He's saying, why were you not afraid to speak with my servant Moses? Because he stands before me, and I know him intimately. I know who he is. He is my mouthpiece. He is my prophet. He is my leader. I have called him, yet you're going to speak against the, him. That's what he's saying. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. And the clouds departed from off the tabernacle, and, and, and behold, Miriam became leprous as white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. Now I want to stop here a second, too. You can see that this... Scripture here, the way it's written and the way it's put in here, we know we have to put the pieces together in a lot of situations. But the way it's worded here, it sounds like Miriam is getting in trouble and getting punished severely, it looks like. But Aaron gets away with uh, speaking against Moses. Something is to sin. But that's not so. And we're going to get into that in a little bit here, too. And Aaron said on to Moses, Alas, my Lord, I... Beseech thee late, not to sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed, when he cometh out of his mother's womb. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, o Lord, I beseech thee. And the Lord said unto Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? And let her be shut out from the camp seven days, and after that let her be received again. And Miriam was shut out of the camp seven days. And the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again. And afterward the people removed from um, Hamroth, Haz Hazroth, and pitched in the wilderness of Haran. Yeah, some of these words are really hard for me even to say. Okay, All right, now we're going to look at uh, Miriam again, okay, because we just seen what happened with the two, and like I said, it seems like Aaron's getting away with not getting punished, but like I said, we'll see that that's not true because God does not forget. The only reason he'll forget, the only way he forgets is if you say, Father, forgive me. In other words, you've got to be humble, you've got to be repentant, and you've got to ask him for forgiveness. Okay, so number, uh, Numbers 20, verse 1, Numbers 20, verse 1. 
Then came the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, into the desert of Zin in the first month, and the people abode in Kadesh, and Miriam died there and was buried there. See, God has the last say-so. He has the last laugh. We see that in Revelation, too, about Satan. And I've already read to you uh, Numbers chapter 12 as to why. All right. So now we're going to look at another one here. We're going to look at Eli. 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 10 to 18. 1 Samuel chapter 4. Okay, verse 10 to 18. First Samuel 4, 10 to 18. And the Philistines fought, and Israel, uh, and Israel was smitten, and they fled every man into his tent. And there was a very great slaughter, for there fell of Israel 30,000 footmen. And the ark of God was taken, and the two sons of Eli, Hopni and Phinehas, were slain. And there ran a man of Benjamin out of the army and came to Shiloh the same day with his clothes rent and with earth upon his head. And when he came to Eli, is he, Eli was, uh, he was sitting upon a seat by the wayside watching, for his heart trembled for the ark of God. And when the man came into the city and told it, all the city cried out, and when Eli heard the noise of the crying, he said, What meaneth the noise of this tumult? And the man came in hastily and told Eli. Now Eli was ninety and eight years old. And his eyes were dim that he could not see. And the man said unto Eli, I am he that came out of the army, and I fled today out of the army. And he said, What is there done my son and the messenger answered and said israel fled before the philistines and there has been also a great slaughter among the people and thy two sons also him hopney and phineas are dead and the ark of god is taken and it came to pass when he made mention of the ark of god that he fell off the uh, the seat backward by the side of the gate and his neck break, and he died, for he was an old man and heavy. And he judged Israel forty years. Okay, we're going to look at First Samuel chapter 2, verse 12 to 17. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 12 to 17. Touch my eyes, Father. First Samuel 12, First Samuel 2, 12 to 17. And now the sons of uh, Eli were the sons of Baal. They knew not the Lord. And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servant came while the flesh was in seething with a fish hook of three teeth in his hand. And he stuck it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot. All that the flesh hook brought up, the priest took for himself. So they did in Shiloh unto all the Israelites that came thither. Also before they burnt the fat, the priest's servants came and said unto the man that sacrificed, Give flesh to roast for the priest, for he will not have sodden flesh of thee, but raw. And if any man said unto him, Let him not fail to burn the fat presently, and then take as much as thy soul desirest, then he would answer him, Nay, but thou shalt give it to me now. And if not, I will take it by force. Um, wherefore, the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord, for men aboard the offering of the Lord. You know what? I'm going to stop and say something here again. This sounds like what's going on today in the churches, huh? They don't have respect for God. They... They hate his commandments, they hate his laws, and they hate his people that are, uh, you know, that are searching for him and that are Holy Spirit-filled followers of Christ. I mean, we see that in today's society also, and it's sad because when they stand in front of God, in fact, every one of us is going to stand in front 
of the judgment seat. Now for the Christian, when we go up, we stand in the presence of God because we've already been, if we stay repentant and under the blood of Christ, we've already been um, judged. Okay, and that's another story in itself too. I did put up a couple posts on that too, not too long ago. Okay, let's look at First Samuel chapter 2, verse 22 to 31. 22 to 31. First Samuel 2, 22 to 31. Now Eli was very old and heavy and, um, and heard all that his sons did unto Israel and how they lay with the, with the women at the assembly at the door, or that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the con congregation. And he said unto them, Why do you such things? For I hear of your evil dealings by all this people. Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. Ye make the Lord's people to transgress. If one man sinned against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord would slay them. And the, ch and the child Samuel grew and was in favor both with the Lord and also with, with men. And there came a man of God unto Eli and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, did I plainly appear unto the house of thy father when they were in, the, when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? And did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest to offer upon my altar to burn incense to wear an ephod before me? And did I give unto the house of thy father all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel? Wherefore kick ye that is he at my sacrifice and at my offering which I have commanded in my habitation and honorest thou sons above me to make yourselves with the chiefest of all the offerings. I'm going to stop here a second. So see, he, he honored his sons. He honored his sons way above, evidently, of, uh, of God himself and, uh, and above the service that God put on his line of sons. You see what I mean? So... This is why God brought his death apart. This about, and this is also why, with this and why I told you they were they didn't believe God and they they did the evil in front of the in front of the sight of God. That's why his sons were 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 killed in battle. And that's when the ark was taken. I just read that to you. Wherefore the the Lord God of Israel saith. I said indeed that thy house and that the house of the father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord saith, be it far from me. For them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Behold, the days come that I will cut off thine arm and the arm of thy father's house. And there shall not be an old man in thine house. Now I'm going to interject again here. And there's another study right there. God honors those that honor him. And there also, uh, I'm going to add in here that, that David said, touch not my anointing. So when you're speaking against someone that has a call on their life and is trying to do what God tells them to do, when you're backbiting them and stabbing them and, and doing all sorts of evil against them or speaking evil against them, it's not unknown to God. Keep that in mind. Okay, and then we're going to look here at the rebellion of Korah and Korah's company. Okay, Numbers chapter 16. Numbers 16. Hallelujah. 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 Numbers 16. Now Korah, the son of Ishar, uh, the, the son of Korath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abram, the son of Elab, and On, 
the son of Peleth, the sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses and certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation how they are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye yourself above the congregation of the Lord. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face, and he spake unto Korath and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who is holy, and will cause them to come near unto him, even him whom he has chosen, will he cease to come near unto him. On cause, cause. So he's making, I'm sorry, cause them to come unto him. He's going to call all of them into his sight, into the tabernacle of the door, the door of the tabernacle, in other words. Um, do this, take your censers, Korah, and all his company, and put fire therein, and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow, and it shall be that the man whom the Lord has chosen, he shall be holy. Ye take too much upon you, ye sons of Levi. Whew. And Moses said unto Cory, Here, I pray you, ye sons of Levi, seemeth it but a small thing unto you that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself, to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord, and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them? Whew. Wow. And he has brought them near to him, and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee, and seek ye the priesthood also, for which causes both thou and thy company are gathered together against the Lord, and what is Aaron, that ye murmur against him. And Moses sent to call Dotham and Abam, but the, see, the sons of Elab, which said, We will not come up. It is a small thing, is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of the land that floweth with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us? Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey, or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Wilt thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. And Moses was very... Ooh. Roth and said unto the Lord, Respect not thou their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. And Moses said unto Korah, Be thou and all thy company before the Lord, thou and, and they and Aaron tomorrow, and take every man his censer and put, um, put incense in them, and bring ye therefore. The Lord, every man his censer, 250 censers, thou also, and Aaron, each of you his censer. And they took every man his censer and put fire in them and laid uh, incense thereon and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Koran gathered all the uh, congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and wilt thou be wroth with the, the, all the congregation? Wow. Oh. That I'm, uh, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dothan, and Abram. And Moses rose up and went unto Dothan and Abram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men. And 
touch not their things, lest you be consumed in their sins. So they got up and uh, from the tabernacle of Korah, Adan, Thin, and Abram on every side, and Datham and Abram came out and stood in the door of their tents, and their wives, and their sons, and their little children. And Moses said thereby, Ye shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works, and for I have not done them um, of my own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if it be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up, with all that uh, 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 pertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, that ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord, and it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground uh, clave uh, asunder, and was see that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their houses, and all the men that appertained to Korah, and all their goods, they and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit. And the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. And all Israel that were around about them fled at the cry of them. For they said, Least the earth swallow us up also. And there came out a fire from the Lord, and consumed the two hundred and fifty men that offered incense. Whew. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Eleazar the son of Aaron, the priest, that ye take up the censers out of the burning, and scatter uh, thou the fire yonder. For they are hollowed. The sense of these sinners against their own souls, let them make them broad plates for a covering of, of the altar. For they offered them before the Lord, therefore they are hollowed. And they shall be assigned to the children of Israel. Whew, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Wow, thank you. Okay. And Eliezer the priest took the brazen censers where they had that with with they that had burnt them of offer, had offered and they were made a broad place for a covering of the altar to be a memorial unto the children of Israel that no stranger which is not of the seed of Abram Aaron I'm sorry come near to the um, to offer incense before the Lord that he be not as Korah and as his company and the Lord said unto him by the hand of Moses. But on the morrow, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses. So this is the second time they're coming again. Even after they've seen the earth swallow Korah and all 250 men with everything they own and all their families. A lot of nerve, don't you think? But the morrow, on the morrow, the whole, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, "Ye have killed the prophet. You have killed the people of the Lord." And it came to pass, when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron, that they looked toward the tabernacle of the con uh, congregation, and behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. And Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Get ye up from among this congregation, that I may consume them in, as in a moment. And they fell upon their faces. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer, and put fire therein from the altar, and put on incense, and go quickly unto the congregation, and make an atonement for them. See, that atonement right there is a covering. It's a covering. See, Jesus is our atonement. His blood covered us. And we accept him as Savior. We've asked for forgiveness. 
His blood covers us. And when we do something, if we, when we sin, Father, please forgive us. Cover us with the blood of Christ. Restore us. Restore us in your eyes. Hey, instantly. Just like Psalms chapter 103, verse 12 says, um, he's put our sins as far as east is from the west. Praise God. So that's what he does. He remembers them no more. There's a scripture on that too, which I can't off the top of my head remember. But he remembers our sins no more. And you know, the people that bring it to him, right? That he don't remember it. The people continuously pick it up and take it to him again. Let's stop doing that. Because you hinder your walk with Christ getting stronger and moving, moving to the next level. I'm living an example of that one. For there is wrath gone out from the Lord, the plague is begun. And Aaron took um, as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague had, was begun among the people. He And he put on incense and made an atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living, and the plague stayed. Now they that died in the plague were 14,700. Now see, we're talking about history here. This is a history lesson also. Not only that God, you know, has consequences for sins, and he will, if you're not honoring him, he will bring about your punishment. So you have to stay in repentance. You have to stay humble to repent. So you can see 14,700 died. Besides them that died about the matter of Korah. So 14,700 plus the 250 that was swallowed up by the earth. And Aaron returned unto Moses unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and the plague was stayed. Whew. All I got to say is, whoo, forgive us, Father. And then we're going to look at King David. 2 Samuel chapter 11. Now you know that David was a man after God's heart. Second Samuel 11. Now, even though David was loved by God and after God's heart and and uh, God did for him, his punishment was still dealt out, I'm going to say it that way, dealt out to his descendants, in fact, to his children, his descendants after that. That's not to say that God didn't forgive him because he asked for forgiveness, but still yet punishment because he's a representative of God. And like I said, please stay humble and repentant. King David, second chap, uh, Second Samuel, chapter eleven. And it came to pass after the year was expired, at the end of the uh, when at the time when the kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him, and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of the Ammonites, and, bes and besieged Rabath. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon, and David, said, and David sent and inquired after that woman. And one said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Iliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness. And she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived and sent and told David, and said, I am with child. And David sent to Joab, saying, send, send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. And when Uriah was come unto him, David uh, demanded of him how Joab did, and how the people did, and how the war prospered. 
And David said to Uriah, Go down to thy house and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house, and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord, and went down to his house. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down unto his house, David said unto Uriah, Camest thou not from thy journey? Why then didst thou not go down unto thine house? And Uriah said unto David, The ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents. And my lord Jacob, uh, Jaab, I'm sorry, Joab, the servants and the servants of thy lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go into mine, uh, mine house? to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife as thou liveth and as I so liveth I will not do this thing well and David said to Uriah tarry here today also and tomorrow and I will let thee depart so here Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and the morrow, and when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk, and at evening he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his Lord, and went not down to his house. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab, and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote it in the letter, saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, and retire from him that he may be smitten and die. And it came to pass when Joab observed the, the city that he assigned Uriah in the place of where he knew that valiant men were. And the men of the city went out and fought against Joab. And there fell some of the people of the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also. And Joab sent and told David all the things concerning the war, and charged the messenger, saying, When thou hast made an end of telling the matter of the war unto the king, and if so that the, be that the king's wrath arise, and he saith unto them, um, Wherefore approached ye so nigh unto the city when ye did not fight? Or when ye did fight? Um, know ye not that they would shoot from the wall? Who smote Amalek, the son of um, Jeru Jerubisheth? Did not a woman cast a piece of millstone upon him from the wall, and that he died in Tisbas? He uh, why went ye nigh the wall? Then thou say thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. So the messenger went and came and showed David all that Joab had sent him for, and the messenger said unto David, Surely the men uh, prevailed against us and came out unto us in the field, and we were upon them even unto the entering of the gate. And the shooters shot from off the wall upon the servant, thy servants, and some of the king's servants be dead, and thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. Then David said unto the messenger, Thus shalt thou say unto Joab, Let not this thing displease thee, for the sword devoureth one as well as another. Make thy mantle more strong against the city, and overthrow it, and encourage thou him. And when the, the wife of Uriah heard that, um, that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. And when the mourning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house, and she became his wife and bare him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. Okay, then we're going to read uh, 2 Samuel 12, 1 to 23. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him, and he said unto him, There were two men in the city, the one rich and the other poor, and the rich man had exceeding flocks and herds. But the poor man had nothing save one little all lamb, which he had brought and nourished up, and it grew up together with him and with his children, and it did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup, and lay in his bosom, and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take his, his own flock, of his own flock, and of his own herd, to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that had come to him. And uh, David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. He said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth the man that had done this thing shall surely die, and he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. 
Thus said the Lord God of Israel, I anoint the king, anointed the king over Israel. I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Therefore thou hast done despised, thee hast despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight. Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. And now therefore the sword shall never depart from the, thine house. There you go. Let me interject here. Verse 10. The sword will not depart from thy house. Because he did that. Just like David said, man had no pity on the one that had one lamb. But he took from that man. He took all he had. Whew. Lord Jesus, don't let us be like that. Thus saith the Lord, behold, I will rise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and I will... Take thy wives before thine eyes, and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this of his of his son. We interject here again. If you remember back to where Saul gave David his daughter Michael as wife, because David had killed Goliath. Okay. And so Israel was able to defeat the uh, Philistines through him, through those actions at that present time. He gave them all this stuff. And if you look back at, I think it's 1 Samuel uh, 15, 22 and 23, I believe it is, somewhere around there, that uh, Saul was kicked out from being king in God's sight. In other words, his kingdom ship was taken from him because he followed the people and feared the people more than he feared God. He didn't do what God told him to do. So David's, David um, reaped all that, and he's now king, and now he's doing to somebody else. And God doesn't forget that. See, he said here, he's, he rose up, God rose up from his own household. Like when you keep on reading here, that's another study, but when you keep reading, you see, um, what was his name? His son, I'll remember in a minute, but his son rose up against him and tried to exert, usurp his kingdom from him. Anyhow, he wound up dying. And I'll remember the name in a minute, hopefully. For thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, the Lord also has put away my sin. The Lord has also put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. So he, he didn't die because of this. Because why? He repented. How did because of this deed thou hast given great occasion for to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. So that is when, right after that is when uh, his son died, the one that uh, Bathsheba was carrying. And, and, and Nathan departed unto on, his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and it was very sick, and David therefore besought God for the child. And David fasted and went in and laid all night upon the earth. And the elders of his house arose and went to him, to raise them up from the earth, but he would not. Neither did he eat bread with them. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. And the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spake unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. How will he um, then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead? But when David saw that the servants whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore David said unto his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. i, I got to interject again here too. About, what was it? 2004, I believe it was. 
I wanted to know. I woke up. Uh, There's a story there too. I always have, I also have this posted in the entirety, or as much as I could put together, on my group page. Uh, I think it's on Life's Invisible Sport also, but it's on. I put it on specifically dreams, visions, and the results. Well, I was. It was about two thirty in the morning. In in that area, it was early, early, early morning. And uh, I woke up screaming, where are my kids? I was demanding of God, where are my children? I demanded what was going on, why this was happening to us, what happened to my children, where are they at? Well, God told me. He answered all my questions too, even though I was being a lunatic at that time. He told me that the spirit of lunatic jumped off my sister-in-law onto me. Number one thing he told me. And he told me what was happening. That's when he found out the witch's covenant was the next street over from across the highway from us. Didn't know that neither until that point. And he told me that God, he told me that my babies are with him. I know for a fact that if you've had a miscarriage, if you've had a stillborn, um, anything like that, that you've lost a child, and they're under that age where they don't understand that they have to accept Christ as their Savior. Granted, now, when they're in heaven with him, they will have to accept him. But then there's not going to be a problem because they'll know his love. They'll know the glory of God and what Jesus did for them. See, this is the thing I'm telling you. Uh, innocence goes straight to the Father, and they will be continued to learn. That's why I've said several times, I know without a shadow of a doubt where my children are. I know without a shadow of a doubt because there's some other things that happened to me. And I do have that on my same channel there, the same group page, Dreams, Visions, and, and uh, the Results Thereof. So please look at those two things there. Just type it in, and it'll come up. It was about my uh, Pomeranian and what happened to him right before he passed away. And actually what happened to me too right before he passed away. So... I know for a fact that animals are in heaven. I know for a fact that, that children are in heaven. You can't tell me different. I know for a fact that, that uh, each creature, each living creature, I'm talking about animals too, they have a soul. Well, what is the soul? We would, First off, we wouldn't be known to anybody. We, crossed over, we, we would be like a robot. <coughs> Excuse me. So we would have our emotions. A soul is where... Your will, your intellect, which is, you know, your personality. This, is, this consists of your personality. So the soul is the mind, will, intellect, and the emotions. The mind and the intellect are interchangeable. So as you say the same thing, you say mind or will. Mind, will, emotions, you know, your intellect. So that's where those live. And if we didn't have our soul that was attached to our spirit... Remember that we are a three-part being like God is, or like our creator is. And there's a whole story, that's a whole story, there's a whole study in itself also. I'm not going to get into that right now, because that that take you way out into left field, way long, way long, 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 too long a video. Now, we are made up of, of we are a spirit, come from God, with a soul that gives us who we are and our personalities and our mind, our intellect, right? That's how we can learn things. And we, the spirit and the soul, are intertwined because we have to be. We have to live here on earth. But the spirit and the soul live in a body. Why do we have a body? So we can accept Christ as our Savior. So we can tell other people about him. So we can tell them about where we're going to go and tell them about how hell started, how, you know, you go there and then how you go to heaven and what God expects out of us. See, I'm just going to throw that in there for free. Then David arose from the earth and washed his, <laughs> washed and anointed himself and changed his apparel and came into the house of the Lord and worshiped. And then he came to his own house. And when he had required, they set bread before him and he did eat. Then said his servants unto him, What thing is it that thou hast done? Thou didst fast and weep for the child while it was alive, but when the child was dead, thou didst rise and eat bread. And he said, While the child was <clears throat> yet alive, I fasted and wept, for I said, Who can tell whether God will be gracious to me 
that the child may live. But now he is dead, wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. Huh. You know, it just makes me think, well, I cross over. I've told people this too. Do not. I've told my husband too, my children. Do not try to resurrect me. Do not try to bring me back. So in other words, do not resuscitate. I want to be with my Lord and Savior. I want to be with my Creator. Whew. Hallelujah. I want to be in His arms. And I have felt His arms around me, and I did get to lay my head on His chest and hear Father God's heartbeat. You cannot tell me that this world was created by Big Bang, which is laughable if you really think about it. You cannot tell me that humans evolved from a little tadpole-like thing, our little sperm-looking thing. You cannot tell me that because there has to be a creator. And just like Paul said, all of creation testifies that there's a creator. They all testify the glory of God. Think about those things. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, so you know, like here after this is where uh, is where David's sons, Abathith, Agabeth, hmm. who was the one anyhow that had real long hair? Excuse me. So, and then, like I said, it, the sword will not depart from his house, and it hadn't. Oh, all I say is God help us. Thank you for listening and being with me too, by the way. Father Yahweh, please open the eyes of the spiritually blind before it's too late. Help me to stay humble and repentant in your sight. Help your children to always be cognizant of your presence and help us not to sin. Father, when we do sin, help us to know that we hurt you. Help us to be sorrowful for that. And repentant. Make us all more sensitive to your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name.